Hello friends, welcome to Susan and John MacTube. In this lesson, we learn how to find the Laplace inverse using convolution theorem. I'll give you a version of convolution theorem which will help you do problems easily. And the statement goes like this. Laplace inverse of a product of two functions. So basically, we need two functions f of s and g of s. And the two functions are connected by ordinary multiplication. And this is given by Laplace inverse of f of s, Laplace inverse of g of s, and combined by the operation called convolution. Anyway, I'm using the notation star for convolution here. Normally, in mathematics, convolution means we are combining two functions. Somehow we combine two function and we create a new function. So the practical version of convolution theorem goes like this. We have a product of two functions and we can find the Laplace inverse of the product by taking the convolution of individual Laplace inverse. Okay. Anyway, um, I'll explain more about convolution when we work out the problems. And by the way, in Laplace inverse, convolution is nothing but integration, one particular type of integration. So let's go for the first question. Please write, find the Laplace inverse of 1 by s square multiplied by s plus 1. Those who watched the last video in partial fraction might be thinking, why am I keeping this question again? Because in the last video, we learned that we can tackle this problem with the help of partial fraction. Yes, you are right. We can do this with the help of partial fraction. But for those students who are good in integration, this convolution method will be even faster because in partial fraction, we will put this into type 2 because this is clearly type 2. So we will be putting it as a by s plus b by s square plus c by s plus 1. And then you will find the values of a, b, c. If you are comfortable with that method, then go ahead, use that method. But in examination, if they mention, only if they mention using convolution evaluate, you cannot do partial fraction but you have to use this method. Anyway, I am going to write this as Laplace inverse of 1 by s square multiplied by 1 by s plus 1 because the convolution theorem can be applied only if you have a product of two functions. And according to convolution theorem, I had to take the Laplace inverse separately. Can you see? I am taking the Laplace inverse of the two functions separately. And I am going to put the convolution symbol in between. By the way, one good news. Convolution of f star g is the same as convolution of g star f. Both are same. Both will give you the same result. So, according to our advantage, advantage means when we integrate you will understand according to the advantage that we get when we integrate we will interchange it now what is the formula i hope you are like really good with the formula in laplace inverse so the laplace inverse of 1 by s square is t convolution the laplace inverse of 1 by s plus 1 is e to the power minus t now if you want it you can do it in the reverse version also Anyway, I will write the definition of convolution. Now, convolution means we are going to integrate from 0 to t. In every problem, you will write 0 to t. So, the limits of convolution will be from 0 to t. Then what you do is, you read the first function. The first function is t. In another problem, it can be sin t. In another problem, it can be t squared. Whatever, you read the first function and replace every t with the letter u. For example, if the first function is sin t, you should write sin u. 
Okay, anyway, here the function is t itself. So I'm going to write u. And then you write the second function. Here it is e to the power minus t. And replace every t with t minus u. So I'll get e to the power minus brackets t minus u. So what do you do? In the first function, you replace every t with u. And in the second function, you replace every t with t minus u. And it will be integrated with respect to u. And it will be integrated with respect to u. So this goes like integral 0 to t, u e to the power minus t. And this minus is distributed, so it will be plus u du. And I'm sure that you know a power m plus n is a power m times a power n. So that gives me the freedom to split this e to the power t plus u, e to the power minus t, e to the power u. And that e to the power minus t will go outside. So we end up with e to the power minus t, 0 to t, u times e power u du. Now you can apply integration by parts. Or you can apply the Bernoulli's trick that I explained in Fourier's um, what you call Fourier series. So I'm going to apply Bernoulli's rule instead of I late. That is e power minus t, and then first function integral of second minus derivative of first integral of second, and then I'll keep the limits um, t and zero. So e power minus t, and I'm sure you're good with integration, so you won't have much trouble with this minus 0 minus e power 0. So you will end up with e power minus t. I have already worked out with this question. So I get t into e power t minus e power t minus minus will be plus 1. And you can take the uh, e power minus t inside and you will get the answer. Anyway, uh, like what you call this method is good for the students who are like really good with integration. Now let's do another problem. This will give you or this will actually show you how powerful this convolution theorem is. Please write, find the Laplace inverse of s divided by s square plus 1 multiplied by s square plus 4. Now if you try this problem with partial fraction, if you try this problem with partial fraction, you will be in big trouble because this is type 3. This is not type 1, this is not type 2, this is type 3. And if you do this in partial fraction method, you have to evaluate A, B, C, D. But now look at the trick. I am going to write this as, if you want to apply convolution theorem, you should have a product of two functions. So I am going to write this as S by S square plus 1 multiplied by ordinary multiplication S square plus 4. Now I am going to apply the convolution theorem Laplace inverse of s by s square plus 1, Laplace inverse of 1 by s square plus 4 and combine it with convolution. Is that clear? Now I am sure you know the formula for s by s square plus 1 that is cos t convolution. This will be 1 by 2 sin 2t. Okay, now one advantage of convolution, you can write in any order that you like and you can throw this constants outside. So you can keep this 1 by 2 outside and take convolution of the remaining part. You can write like what you call sin 2t convolution cos t. You can write in any order you like, you can throw the constants outside. Now tell me, how do you do convolution? Very simple put integral 0 to t. Now what should we do with the first function? Replace t with the letter u. And what should I do with the second function? Replace every t with the letter t minus u. By the way, it's not a letter. It's like what you call replace t with t minus u. And did you understand why I interchanged sin 2t and cos t? Because I saw a double angle here and I didn't want to make a mess over here. Anyway, the remaining is something very basic, something which I have learned in uh, what you call high school level. 
how do you integrate sine cos a product of sine cos I'll write the formula here I hope you remember the formula from once upon a time that is when you were in class 10 or in class 9 you learned sine a cos b product to some formula if you want the trigonometry formula you can uh, download it from our website so basically the formula goes like half sine a plus b plus sine a minus b now once more let me tell you this has nothing to do with convolution this is simply integration and if you are not that good in integration use partial fraction method it might be difficult but still you'll get the answer but if it in in exam if they specially mention use convolution theorem then you don't have an option anyway I'll apply this convolution theorem so this goes 1 by 2 and sine a plus okay so that will be 2u plus t minus u and plus sine 2u minus t minus u I have already worked out here so that's a little bit easy for me but uh, make sure you practice at least two times so this 1 by 4 integral this will become what is 2u minus u you get sine u plus t plus sine 3u minus t du now look at this you are integrating with respect to u and the limits of u are from 0 to t in every problem in every time you do convolution it is 0 to t so 1 by 4 into what is the integration of sine minus cos minus cos now it's just uh, some simplification so you plug in the upper limit so 1 by 4 okay, what happens when you plug in I'll color it so that it becomes useful for you so we are going to plug in the value upper limit and lower limit for the green part so minus cos what is t plus t 2t what is 3t minus t minus brackets put the lower limit so that will be minus cos t minus cos t divided by 3 now simplify that's uh, something which you can do very easily now let's go for one more problem uh, I'll do it halfway and you can try the remaining part so find but make sure you work out a lot of questions if you want to get marks in exam that is like very very important so Laplace inverse of 1 by s into s plus 1 the whole cube so what do you do if you want you can put it into partial fraction but it will be a little bit difficult because it will be like a by s b by s plus 1 c by s plus 1 whole square d by s plus 1 whole cube so you have to find a b c d but if you are good in integration you can write this as 1 by s 1 by s plus 1 the whole cube and apply convolution theorem how do you apply convolution theorem you take Laplace inverse of the two functions and combine it with a star star means convolution now what is Laplace inverse of 1 by s 1 and what is Laplace inverse of 1 by s plus on the whole cube you can apply inverse shifting theorem uh, so you can write e power minus t and then 1 by s cube 1 by s cube will be t square divided by 2 and if you want you can keep the constant outside anyway it is better to keep the symbol function uh, at the last so I'm going to keep it like e power minus t t square by 2 convolution 1 and how do you take convolution 0 to t write the first function by replacing every t with u and write the second function by replacing every t with t minus u oh there is no t so write the second function 
write the second function as such and now it's just a matter of integration so I'm going to write 1 by 2 outside integral 0 to t and this time I want you to complete this use i late or the shortcut the Bernoulli shortcut okay I'll show you one more question please write Laplace inverse of s square divided by s square plus 9 the whole square okay look at this you can apply partial fraction I kept on saying that but my favorite is convolution because I'm pretty okay with integration but sometimes integration will put you into big trouble so don't be overconfident but if you're kind of like okay with integration we can go for convolution so I'm going to write this as s divided by s square plus 9 s divided by s square plus 9 now what do you do you write Laplace inverse of the first function you write Laplace inverse of the second function and combine with s star what is Laplace inverse of s divided by if the numerator is s it is going to be yeah, cos 3t star cos 3t and then how do you do it how do you take the convolution 0 to t write the first function by replacing every t with u and write the second function by replacing every t with t minus u that's it now it's just a matter of integration I think I'll write one more step so that will be comfortable for you cos 3u cos 3t minus 3u du and I'll keep the formula also now just integrate it the formula for cos a cos b is 1 by 2 cos a plus b plus cos a minus b so here we have a as 3u and b is 3t minus 3u so that's it I'll be back with another video and in the next video we will go through the second shifting in inverse the inverted version of the second shifting theorem and finally differential equation and let me tell you one more thing before I go in third semester most of the topics are kind of like easy to understand but in the third semester compared to your second semester there is a lot of integration and if you want to be successful with integration you have to practice a lot especially Fourier series and matrix uh, there is no integration in matrix but even if you miss one number or even if you make one small mistake it might uh, like what you, call, you might be wasting your 10 to 15 minutes so in third semester you need a lot 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 of practice in LPP everywhere you need a lot of practice so make sure you watch the video get a rough idea how to work out the problems and then take past paper and practice unless and until you practice past papers again and again and again you won't be able to score marks you may understand but still if you want to score marks make sure you practice again and again and again till things are perfect so we'll meet soon so till then my friends bye